Anyway, let's jump back into new magic cards, shall we? Because it's one of my favorite things to look at. And we're doing black. Our first black card is Agent of the Iron Throne. It's two and a black for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have whenever an artifact or creature you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'd say above average. Or about average. Let's say average. Uh, Agent of the Shadow Thieves. Uh, sold. One in a black for legendary enchantment background. Commander, creatures you own have whenever this creature attacks. Player. If no a player... If no opponent has more life than that player, put a 1-1 counter on this creature. It gains death touch and indestructible till end of turn. Um, anything that makes commanders um, able to have death touch is pretty great, I think. This is... A, it's good. It's less powerful than I would have thought or had hoped. But if you're pairing it with something that that really matters when it connects, then this is going to be really good. It gets death touch, so people aren't going to want to put shit in front of it. Uh, it also gets indestructible, which means no one can like blow it up. I, I like it. I think that's above par. Next up, we have Altar of Ball. Two and a black for an artifact with... Uh, two and a black and tap to exile a creature you control return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield activate only as a sorcery So it's an artifact that replaces a creature you control with a creature that has died. I dig that. I think that's really cool And then on top of that, it's this artifact also has an adventure on it bone offering for two and a black create a tapped for one Black Skeleton Creature Token with Menace. That's pretty cool. So, create a 4-1. And then, you can untap it and attack with it. Or you can play the Altar of Balls main side, the artifact side, and then pay 2 to exile that creature. And return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield and swap it out. I like that. That's above average. Ambitions cost. Three and a black for a sorcery. You draw three cards and lose three life. That's par. That is that is par personified right there. Ancient Brass Dragon. So this is the black version of the Ancient Dragon cycle. Five black black for an Elder Dragon with flying. 7-6 power and toughness. So it's a little bit weaker than the blue and the white one. Whenever Ancient Brass Dragon deals combat damage to a player, roll a d20. When you do, put any number of target creatures with total mana value X or less from graveyards onto the battlefield under your control where X is the result. That's not your graveyard. That's all graveyards. So if you roll a 20, you can pile up you could do two 10 mana cards. You can do um, four, five mana cards. You can do 21 mana cards. That is pretty stellar. I think these ancient dragons, all five of them, I'm assuming, are going to be game changers. They're going to be the cards that sway a game one way or the other. Um, and this black one is really cool, really interesting. I like it. Bringing the Elder Dragon back to Elder Dragon Highlander. Next up, we have Armor of Shadows. One black for an instant until end of turn. Target creature gets plus one, plus oh, and gains indestructible. So it's basically one... It's the black version of... Um, Snakeskin Veil. Um... It's kind of like the Fane Death or what was that Kamigawa one? There was a Kamigawa one that phases out and in or gets a plus one and lifelink. And then when it dies, it returns. Kind of like that, but it's more 
along the lines of Snakeskin Veil, instantly gives something indestructible, Armor of Shadows, I love it. Flavor-wise, as a fan of the Shadow Rogues, I'm a fan of that card above average. Above par is my rating. Arms of Hadar. First we had someone stealing someone else's hands, now we're stealing full arms. Three and a black for a sorcery. Creatures, target player control, get minus two, minus two till end of turn. This is fun. This is a single player board wipe, potentially. I think that's powerful, that's fun. Um, something you have to play around as someone playing against a black deck. I, I appreciate this card. I appreciate what it's trying to do. It's sorcery speed, so you can even wait until they like declare blockers or anything like that. If they have an army of 1-1s, one you can kill them all. I, I like it. This card is above average, especially for a common. 4 mana is a little steep, but it's sorcery speed, so it's on your turn. I dig it. Uh, Asterian's Thirst. Asterian is the, uh, the decadent vampire from Baldur's Gate 3. Three and a black for an instant. Exile target creature. Put X11 one, one counters on a commander creature you control where X is the power of the creature exiled this way. Asterian says in the flavor text, stop a bleeding, it's distracting. Card is very sexy. Lots of pent up sexual tension in this card. Uh, as far as rating goes, it's above average. Black decks like to sacrifice. This puts counters on commander equal to sacrifice creatures uh, power. I think that's above average. I think every black deck, especially if you have one or even two at the very least sack outlets in your deck. Asterian's Thirst is a great inclusion. Great inclusion. Atrocious Experiment. Oh, the art on this card is hype. Two and a black for a sorcery. Target player mills two cards, draws two cards, then loses two life. That's below average. I think that there's, there's a lot of cards like this. There might even be this card. This might be a reprint, but there's a lot of cards that are like this. Mill, draw, lose to life. It's uh, pretty standard in Commander, at least, to openly mill yourself, to use life as a resource. At the end of the day, what are your bonuses? You get access to two cards, assuming you have graveyard play. So that's automatically... For three mana, get access to two cards off the top of your deck, potentially, um, and then draw two cards. So for three mana, you get potentially four bonuses. I, I like that. I would say that's average. Uh, I would put I would put it at par. In the right deck, it's definitely above par. Next up, we have Blood Money. Five black black for a mythic sorcery. Destroy all creatures. For each non-token creature, destroy this way. Create a tapped treasure token. It's like Grim Bounty, but huge. And it's seven mana. For the Patriarch class, wealth is in the blood. That's above par. Bone Collar Cleric, one and a black for a 2-1 human cleric. Uh, it has on it a an ability, a mana ability. Three and a black, sacrifice Bone Collar Cleric, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Can only be activated as a sorcery. So for two mana, you set up a switch. For four mana, essentially. Uh, not a tapped ability, so you could do this while it has summoning sickness. Very interesting. Um, I think it could be above par if it was a little bit more expensive and had an ETB trigger. But I think it's par. I think this, this card will see play for sure. 
Call to the Void, four and a black for a sorcery. Each player secretly chooses a creature they control and a creature they don't control. Then those choices are revealed. Destroy each creature chosen this way. Damn. This is a fun card. For five mana, you could, worst case scenario, kill four creatures. If every, if all of the players have creatures on the board and everyone chooses the same creatures on everyone's board, you're only going to get four total. So for five mana, kill four creatures, that's par already. I would do that any day of the week. Um, on top of that, you could get eight creatures. Two of them being your own, obviously, um, which sucks. So you could kill six of your opponent's creatures, max. Then, oh wait, no. Then they choose a creature that, yeah. Okay, so you could choose, you could get six max. Um, everyone has to choose a creature they have and a creature someone else has. So I guess you could You could only kill, no, it would still be four minimum. If everyone has creatures, this is four minimum die. Yeah, I, I say that's above par. Also fun. I love, I love cards that kind of interact with secrets and, and choosing things without hiding player knowledge and, and, um, Obviously, it's a small version of a board wipe. It's a potential board wipe. Uh, cast down. One in a black instant. Destroy target lawn legendary creature. That's good. Straight up above par. Uh, it doesn't have... got a weird notification about reroll ads being on I mean they're running right now or no they're not Why would it give me that warning? Anyway, uh, cast down two mana, destroy something that's non-legendary. You're going to play that in every black deck. That's above par. That's better than most instant kill spells. Sure, it doesn't kill a legendary, but... You know. Get something out of there. Love it. Chain Devil is three and a black for a 4-2 creature devil with animate chains. When Chain Devil ETBs, each player sacrifices a non-token creature. That's pretty good. I'd say that's par, though. Four mana for a 4-2. It's not very strong. You can die very easily. Um, Yeah. Par. Cloud kill. Four black black for a sorcery. All creatures get minus X minus X till end of turn, where X is the greatest mana value of a commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. So this is your toxic deluges, your your sort of meat hook massacres, your your full your full board wipes, depending on how big and juicy your commander is. That's that's above par, I would say. It's a fun, a fun board wipe to build around because you're, you're forced to be cognizant of what your commander costs. I think that's, that's cool. Next up we have Criminal Past. Two and a black for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have menace and this creature gets plus X plus zero where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. That's pretty good. That's par. 
I haven't been blown away by any of these black backgrounds yet. Um, we'll see. Cultist of the Absolute. Oh, here's a rare background. One black for a legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own get plus three, plus three. Have flying, death touch, and ward pay three life. And at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Oh, I have to sacrifice a creature. That's brutal. So you want to put this on a commander that you can easily get rid of. Because you don't want to be sacrificing a bunch of creatures. Or put this on a commander in a deck that has an easy sack outlet. So you can play around that. Plus three, plus three, flying and death touch. Plus ward pay three life. I mean, that's worth sacrificing a creature at the beginning of your upkeep. And it only costs one mana to get on the battlefield, so it's easily turned on. Um, I think that's above par. Leaning a little bit towards par, just because this isn't going to be particularly great in every deck that has black. If you want your commander to have a black background enchantment, this isn't going to be the best one for all of them. It is going to be a very good one for some of them. Just not all of them. Uh, next up we have Deadly Dispute. This is a reprint. Uh, one and a black for an instant. as an additional cast cost to cast the spell sacrifice an artifact or creature draw two cards create a treasure get two cards and a free mana flash free artifact um yeah deadly dispute gets a lot of play it's it's a card that people people really like people have built entire kind of play patterns around it so it makes sense that this is on their uh reprint list for the black cards next up we have elder brain this was a reveal stream um card i believe this is also the box topper if you buy the booster box uh five black black for a six six horror creature with menace when elder brain attacks a player exile all cards from that player's hand then they draw that many cards you may play lands and cast spells from among the exiled cards as long as they remain exiled. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though it were a mana of any color to cast it. So, what you want to do is attack with Elder Brain, the person with the most cards in their hand. And then you get the most options to cast land, cast spells. I think that's really cool. It's really expensive, 7 mana, but you do get a 6-6 six, six with Menace, and it's a horror, so it's automatically going in my Umbris deck. I think that's exciting. I'm I'm looking out for this card for sure. I want I want one of them at least. Uh, next we have Eldritch Pact. Six and a black, that's expensive. Target player draws X cards and loses X life where X is the number of cards in their graveyard. Wow. So this is interesting because, you know, as you get closer-ish to the end of the game, you're looking at a situation where you could almost mill someone out or make them just lose all of their life. As soon as someone has, you know, 40 or more cards in their graveyard, which happens quite a bit, then, you know, all's fair and love and eldritch packs, I guess. The Night Serpent tasted the warlock's ambition and savored the dark hunger in her soul. Damn. Next we have Ghastly Death Tyrant. 
four and a black black for a six five beholder skeleton oh undead beholders are terrifying as hell love that they did this love it when ghastly death tyrant enters the battlefield choose one disintegration ray destroy target enchantment and opponent controls you lose life equal to its mana value or death ray creatures you control gain death touch till end of turn I would say this is par. I think the Beholder mantra of you know, choose one of these abilities on its ETB, I think that's fun. I think more cards that have choice are are cool, especially in a D&D format where like choice is part is baked into the world building. Um and it's a Beholder skeleton, so it looks rad. It looks terrifying. I wish there was Beholder Tribal, because with now this second set of D&D cards coming out, I think that there's space to make a Beholder deck, and that would be a lot of fun. Next up, we have Ghost Lantern. For one black artifact equipment, whenever a creature you control dies, put a 1-1 counter on equipped creature, and an equip cost is 1. Um... It also has an instant adventure attached to it. Bind spirit for one and a black return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. This is a fantastic fucking card. Um, it's like eternal hunger. So you enchant a creature basically and it gets one one every time a creature you control dies. Or I guess inter eternal hunger is every time any creature dies. This one is creatures you control dies. So attach it to somebody, and then as you kind of go through the wages of war, it automatically gets buffer. But it also has an instant to, you know, restore something from your graveyard. I think that's great. I think that's above par for sure. Especially if you're playing a black equipment or artifact deck. I think that's easily playable. Um, next up we have Grey Slad. Two and a black for a 4-1 frog horror. That's a frog? That's terrifying. It has a giant great sword. That is cool. Oh, it's a pewter art piece too. Love it. Uh, okay, he's a 4-1 frog horror creature. As long as there are three... As long as there are four or more creature cards in your graveyard, Gray Slag has Menace and Death Touch. That is intense, and I love it. And it's a frog horror? Uh, it also has a sorcery adventure attached to it. Entropic Decay. For one and a black mill four cards. So mill four cards before playing um Ray Slad and then hopefully you get some creature cards in there and then Gray Slad becomes Menace and Death Touch. And it a four one with Death Touch and Menace, that's pretty intense. Plus you put that lantern on this guy, so it gets plus one, plus one every time something you control dies. That was a fun card. More fun is a rogue, though. Guild Sworn Prowler, one and a black for a 2-1 Tiefling Rogue Assassin. It has Death Touch, and when Guild Sworn Prowler dies, if it wasn't blocking, draw a card. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever heard them write something like that. It wasn't blocking draw a card. So if it dies while it's attacking, or if it dies by getting just shot down, you get to draw a card. A 2-1 with death touch draw a card? I don't hate it. I love two power creatures with death touch because you can't double block them without losing everything. Um... It's really fantastic. Not that you would necessarily want a double block. Anyway. That's fun. 
course it's part of my plan. Who do you think started the bar fight? The barroom brawler. I like it. I'd say it's average, slightly above average. Hezru. Five black black for a six six frog demon. Another frog. Another scary frog. Whenever one or more creatures you control become blocked, each blocked, each blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever one or more creatures you control become blocked, so anything someone uses to block it gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. It also has demonic stench. One for one black instant adventure. Each creature that that blocked this turn gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Interesting. I would say that's average. The common, it's seven mana for a six six. I think it could be really good in some decks. It's kind of one of those build around things. And it's very particular in a certain order at a certain time of the game. So I'm going to say average on par overall next we have intellect devour three and a black for a two four horror with devour intellect when intellect devour etbs each opponent exiles a card from their hand until intellect devour leaves the battlefield so it's kind of like a period ascendant or whatever it's called uh it also has body thief you may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled with Intellect Devourer. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. It's interesting. So you can actually cast the things you exile with it. I think I think that's great too. I think that's above par. I like it. Mold Folk, one in a black for a 1-1 one, one Fungus Warrior with Lifelink. It has Mold Harvest. For one mana, sacrifice another creature or an artifact. Put a 1-1 counter on Mold Folk. I think that's cool. Another Pyotr art piece that looks gross and scary. Fungus Warriors, eh? Uh, we've got a Murder reprint. Uh, one and a black, one and one black black for an instant destroy target creature. It's, it's murder. Insert job rules song here. Um, I'm not going to play it because that would be against the rules. We only narrowly avoid the rules. Um, so Okay, so my thoughts on murder are... In previous sets, Murder has been very strong. In the Streets of New Capenna, Murder seems very weak. It's very awkward. In Battle for Baldur's Gate, um, or in Commander in general, I think that Murder is kind of just one of those standard black instants you want to put in your deck. Especially if you're trying to round out your three drops. I think uh, Murder is probably fine. Mirkul's Edict. One in a black for a sorcery. Roll a d20. One through nine. Choose an opponent. That opponent sacrifices a creature. Ten through nineteen. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. And if you roll a nat 20, you get each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power amongst creatures they control. That's pretty cool. For two mana, I think that's above par. That's fun. Adds an element of suspense with the die roll. Can really get and punish your opponents. I like it. Miracles Invoker. Oh, cat. I thought that was a rat for a second. I got really excited. Two and a black for a 2-3 cat rogue. I mean, it is a rogue. Well, I guess it's a win for me either way. Psychic Blades for eight mana. Again, with these like eight mana abilities. Creatures you control get plus two, plus O, oh, and gain menace until end of turn. That is a rat ability. Why are we putting that on a cat card? 
mean, it's really cool art. Aaron L. L. Riley? Aaron A. I. Riley? I can't read that. Um. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. I think if you're playing rogues, probably par at best. A little less than par if you're staring at that giant eight mana cost on that activated ability. Activated ability? I tried to say that too fast. Okay, next up we have Nefarious Imp. Two and a black for a 2-1 imp creature with flying. Whenever one or more permanents you control leave the battlefield, scry one. That's below par. Scry one is nice. Various Imp is three mana for a 2-1 flyer. That's about par. Okay, so maybe it's par. It's par. It's, par. it's Imp, which is another one of those weird creature types um, that don't have a lot of help in other cards so rivals out of the question but uh if you're playing like a thematic demon warlocky type deck always good to have an imp or two an imp or two next up we have nothic four and a black for a four three horror this guy's cool it's like a demonic humunculus weird insight is his ability I feel attacked. When Nothic dies, roll a d20. 1 through 9, you draw a card and lose a life. 10 through 19, draw 2 cards, lose 2 life. If you roll a nat 20, you draw 7 cards and lose 7 life. 5 mana for a 4-3 with card draw on death. I like it. It's definitely going in my Umbra's deck. Got a put those powerful horrors in there it looks like Piotr has had a lot of fun doing the art for a lot of these horrors and creepy under city monsters nothing eh above average I like it I'm looking for one packed weapon three and a black uh, for an artifact equipment, as long as packed weapon is attached to a creature, you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. Interesting. Whenever equipped creature attacks, draw a card and reveal it. That creature gets plus X, plus X until end of turn, and you lose X life, where X is that card's mana value. Equip. To, <laughs> to equip it, you have to discard a card. I mean, that's a pact if I've ever seen one. I think this is fun. This is above par. Um, yeah, I think alternate win cons or more in particular for this card, alternate non-lose cons um, are a lot of fun to build around. Uh, if you like play packed weapon in a deck where your commander has like infect or something, um, pumping it up and losing that life doesn't matter if you go below zero I think having pack weapon in a commander deck that has a sacrifice outlet um, or a pay life spell set life is the ultimate resource if you're playing packed weapon and I think that's gonna make for some crazy crazy black decks Um, next up we have Parasitic Impetus, two and a black for an enchantment aura. Um, this is another one of those enchanted creature gets plus X, plus whatever, plus whatever, and is goaded. Whenever a enchanted creature attacks, its controller loses two life and you gain two life. It's kind of like, um, um, I cannot remember the name of the card right now. It is hold on i'm slowly pulling up my box field page okay this is taking forever to load right now um oh actually i might not have put that i don't think i put that deck on my mox field let's see if untapped has it 
log in. No, I'm wasting a bunch of time looking for this card, but uh, it's going to bother me if I don't find out what it is. Um, no, I don't want standard decks. I want my decks. Oh, I'm not on my account. That's why. Erp. Let's see. Okay, I definitely know that there's a version of it in my mono black enchantment. Clawing Torment. That's the card. Um, it's kind of like that. <laughs> All that work for zero commentary. Um, enchanted creature. It gets a little bit tougher and is goaded, so it can't attack you. And then every time it attacks, which it has to do because it's goaded, uh, controller loses two life and you gain two life. It's par. It's fun. Passageway Seer. Three and a black for a 2-2 two, two Tiefling Warlock with lifelink. When Passageway Seer enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. At the beginning of your end step, if you have the initiative, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Passageway Seer. So it's a 4-mana 2-2 two, two with lifelink. It's pretty par. Par. And then get initiative, which is a bump. And every time you end this, your turn with your initiative, it gets a plus one, plus one. So that's an extra bump. This has to be above par. Mathematically, it has to be. Ravenloft Adventurer. Hell yeah, Ravenloft. Three and a black for a three, four human rogue assassin. That's a pretty easy win right there. Four mana for a three, four human rogue assassin. Uh, when Ravenloft Adventurer enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Easy win. This card's above par. I don't care what the rest of it says. And I want one. If a creature an opponent controls would die, instead exile it and put a hit counter on it. When Ravenloft Adventurer attacks, if you've completed a dungeon, defending player loses one life for each card they own in exile with a hit counter on it. That's really cool, actually. And the nice thing about it is that it says... If a creature an opponent controls would die. It doesn't say you have to kill it. It doesn't say it has to um, die by combat. None of it. It's just straight up. If anything dies, put a hit counter on it. Exile it. And then whenever the adventurer attacks. If you've completed a dungeon. Which hopefully you have because you have the initiative. Um... Defending player loses one life for each card they own in exile with a hit counter. You pair this with a bunch of Clawing Torments. See? Bring it back to Clawing Torment. Because I feel bad that I spent all that time looking for it and then said nothing about it. Uh, this is great. This is above average. Above average for sure. Next up we have Safana. Kalimport Cutthroat. Two and a black for legendary creature human rogue. 3-2 power and toughness with Manache. At the beginning of your end step, if you have the initiative, create a treasure token. Create three of those tokens instead. If you've completed a dungeon, choose a background. That's really cool. So she's kind of like a pirate. Um, lots of treasure being made here. That's really cool, especially if you're playing like an artifact deck or a sack deck or um, a low mana deck. I think Safana is really dope. I think that's above average. You could be really particular with which background you choose for it. Um, I think that's really cool, especially if you're playing humans or rogues. Great, great card. Uh, oh, we got another legendary creature, Saravok Deathbringer. Looks like he's bringing a head. Who would imagine inviting this guy to like a family dinner and he shows up with a head and just glowing yellow eyes? You know when your like fourteen year old cousin shows up to Thanksgiving and you can tell that they got stoned like before they showed up. That's like this, but 
with death. It's a helmet? It is? Lemon Lemonicus Zero says it's a helmet. I mean at least he took off his hat before he came inside. Let's just say that. Might have shown up stoned or whatever, but at least he took his hat off. My grandmother would be very impressed with his manners. Anyway, the card reads hold on, my microphone is like falling down. Sorry about the noise, that's probably really terrible. At the beginning of each player's end step, if no permanence left the battlefield this turn, that player loses X life where X is Saravox power. Choose a background. That's really cool. I think there's a lot of really neat things to do there. I think if you pump Saravok up to make his power huge, and then what I would do is I'd play a bunch of like fog effects or blink effects. And I'd just start protecting other players' cards. Make sure nothing of your players dies. Oh wait, it says if no permanents left the battlefield. Okay, so don't, no blinks, just fogs. Um, or pump, mass pump spells. That would be great too. Um. Yeah, and just drain them through the act of non-death. Interesting card. I think I would probably put it at par just because it takes a special someone to build this deck. And I'd be interested to see what type of backgrounds people start choosing for this card as well. Next up we have Scion of Halaster. One in a black. For a legendary enchantment background with creatures, commander creatures you own have the first time you would draw a card each turn. Instead, look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them into your graveyard and the other back on top of your library, then draw a card. That's pretty cool. Uh, pretty much only relevant for graveyard reanimate decks. You don't want to put I mean, I guess because you're looking at two cards, you can be very particular and just, you know, kind of sieve through your whole deck every upkeep uh, over the course of a game. Um, but yeah, I think that's interesting. Just to have a, a nice little enchantment out there that lets you scry to, then draw for your upkeep. I like it. Above a par. And we have Shadow Heart Dark Justice. Justice. Justicier. Man, my mouth did not want to say that word. Three and a black for a 3-4 human elf cleric. Oh, half elf cleric. For one and a black and tap, sacrifice another creature, draw X cards where X is that creature's power. Choose a background. Perfect. Um, Shadow Heart, I believe, is one of the characters from Baldur's Gate 3. Um, so people are going to be introduced to them uh, be introduced to them shortly and it's also that sack outlet that people are looking for when it comes to building a black deck um, yeah and you get to choose a background I haven't seen many or any of these commanders without the choose a background yet so I'm going to keep my eye out for that uh, we've got Sigil of Mercurial. Mercurial. Two and a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, mill a card. When you do, if there are four or more creature cards in your graveyard, put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature you control, and it gains death touch. That's a pretty fun thing. There was a, a, uh, a few of these Mercurial... Uh, cards in the previous Dungeons and Dragons set and they all kind of had to do with death touch and encounters and graveyards so this is fun it's just a permanent attachment enchantment for your board state and it kind of tweaks your upkeep or beginning of combat sorry not upkeep which can change drastically what combat looks like depending on what you give death touch uh Oh, next up we have Sivris, Nightmare Speaker. 
Three and a black for a 3 3 snake cleric war warlock. Snake cleric warlock. And he has so many S's in his name because he's a snake. I'm assuming. Uh, tap Sivris to sacrifice another creature or artifact for each opponent, mill a card. Then return a card from your graveyard to your hand unless that player pays three life. Oh. Well, this is another sack outlet, but the players, you mill a card, then return a card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, so you get to mill, you could potentially mill three cards. Um, and return three cards from your graveyard to your hand. But each player has the option. Is there an oracle for this card in particular? The Sivris? Um, I can check. Hold on one sec. Um, so my... So players can choose not to let you do that. By losing three life. Which at the beginning of a, of a game, they're probably going to do every time, no matter what. Um, it doesn't look like Sivris is in the Gatherer app yet. So no oracles as of right now. Sivris. Yeah, it looks like they haven't uploaded their Baldur's Gate cards to the uh, gatherer website just yet no oracles uh, this is cool this is uh, another sack outlet in black lots of graveyard play with this one so that's fun I say that's above par uh, and they've reprinted skull port skull port merchant this time with new art I think half of the reprints so far have been the, the old art what is the ordering of actions on Sivris? Um, so you, you tap Sivris. That goes on the stack. To sacrifice another creature. Um, so someone could interrupt that as a tapped ability or an activated ability. Then for each opponent, whichever one you choose, you go through them all. No, so you don't... Yeah, so basically that's that's what the card is saying. So for, if when I choose you as my opponent, um, I get to mill a card. So that happens. And then I can return a card from my graveyard after I've milled. Unless you choose to pay three life. And that stops me from returning a card from my graveyard. And then I move on to the next opponent. And I do the same thing. I mill a card... Then I go to return a card from the graveyard, unless that player pays three life, and then I go to the third opponent. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. I think you can only actually you might be able to block this a few times. You can you can block it when it goes to sacrifice. Um, and then you might be able to block it when you mill a card. I mean, I'm assuming you pass priority after you mill a card. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm, there will be oracles, I'm sure. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting card, so people are going to want to play it. People are going to build some decks around it. Um... What were we saying about Skullport? Oh yeah, there's like half of the reprints are new art and half of the reprints are um, the previously existing art. So I'm curious as to why they made those choices. Um, but Skullport Merchant reads, two and a black for a 1-4 Dwarf Citizen. When Skullport Merchant enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. And you can pay one and a black to sacrifice another creature or treasure and draw a card. Skullport Merchant is played in almost literally every black deck or deck that includes the color black. 
um, in standard right now. So reprinting it to put it in this commander set makes sense. It is from the original D and D set last summer. So it makes sense. It's a good card. People like it a lot. I don't tend to play it a ton, but next we've got Sturge for one black. It's a one, one insect bat. Ew, that's gross. Insect bat with flying. Sturge can't be... Can't, oh, Sturge can't block. And it has blood drain. For one and a black, pay one life. Sacrifice Sturge, draw a card. That's not bad. It's kind of like that uh, learn bat that everyone started playing once people figured out how powerful learn was. Um... Two mana, pay a life, kill your 1-1, one, one, draw a card. Yeah. I mean, I don't see this being a whole lot better any turn past turn 1. This is a great turn 1 card. The 1-1 one, one flyer can't block, so it does nothing until it comes back to your turn. You can ping someone for 1, or you can pay 2 to draw an extra card. I don't hate it. It's probably a little below average, but or below par. Next, we have summon undead four and a black for a sorcery. Mill, you may mill three cards, so it's giving you the option to have more cards at your disposal. Then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So five mana, something from the graveyard to the battlefield, but you also have the option to mill extra cards to get in there. I like it. I'd say it's about par. Thieves Tools. Of course, they're reprinting Thieves Tools. Uh, this is the original art from the D&D &D set. Uh, one in a black for artifact equipment. When Thieves Tools enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Equipped creature can't be blocked and as, lo as long as it is power three or less. So put it on something with a damage trigger on it or an attack trigger on it. Um, and equip two. It's, it's pretty good. Um, I would say it's probably about par. I feel like in Commander, it's probably below par. In Standard, it's a lot more useful. Commander, access to a bigger pool. That's far better cards. Um, but if you're playing Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, or whatever the fuck this set is called, um, Magic the Gathering Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate is the full set name. No, I missed out. Magic the Gathering Commander Legends Dungeons and Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate is the full set name. Too many words. Um, if you're playing, if you're drafting Baldur's Gate or you know, building a deck strictly for with D, D cards or strictly with Baldur's Gates gate cards. I could see Thieves Tools being good, but when you have access to the entire library of commander cards, I don't think Thieves Tools makes the cut. Uh next we have Topaz Dragon. This is cool. Four black black for a four four flying death touch dragon. That's all I need to know. Uh, it also has an adventure on it. Entropic Cloud. Entropic Cloud. One and a black for an instant adventure. Creatures you control gain death touch till end of turn. So it's a big death touch boy that gives death touch. That's above par for sure. Underdark Explorer. Four and a black for a 5-3 lizard wizard. No, oh, lizard warrior. My brain just wanted to say lizard wizard. Uh, it has Menace, and whenever Underdark Explorer enters the battlefield, take the initiative. 5 mana, 5, 3, gives you initiative, has Menace. I guess that's about par. I'm not excited by it, but again, there's a lot of cards with the initiative marker on it. Um, it's obviously something they've fooled around with in testing and love the way it plays out. Everyone in, that plays Commander, I mean, pretty much everyone loves Monarch. So it's just Monarch Extended. DLC for Monarch. 
Uh, next up, we've got Vicious Battle Rager, three and a black for a one five dwarf barbarian. That's the biggest booty dwarf I've ever seen in my life. One five for four mana. When Vicious Battle Rager enters the battlefield, take the initiative. It also has spiked retribution. Whenever Vicious Battle Rager becomes blocked by a creature, that's that creature's controller loses five life. This is a big booty spiky boy. Also, why does he have a little frog pet? Is he attacking that frog? Is that frog friendly? Are they like charging into battle together? Or because he's only got one power, the only thing he can kill is a frog. He just like hits you with his spiky armor. That's pretty cool. I'd say that's par. Maybe slightly above par because it's fun and a little bit interesting. Uh, next we have Viconia Drow Apostate. For two and a black, you get a 2-3 Elf Cleric Legendary Creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are four or more creature cards in your graveyard, return a creature at random from your graveyard to your hand. Choose a background. Random creature returning, that's fun. Who wouldn't think that's fun? Um, yeah. It's also an elf. So... If you're playing Elf Tribal, this is a pretty interesting uh, elf to include. Also an interesting commander if you're doing Elf Tribal because there's lots of jump blocking and, and graveyard cycling in, in Elf decks. So that's cool. I think depending on which background you pair this with, uh, Viconia seems like a pretty intimidating commander. Next up we have Vrock. Three black black for a three three bird demon with flying. It also has toxic spores. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield this turn, each opponent loses three life. A bird demon that matters that wants you to blink things or sacrifice things. What more could you ask for in a black card? Don't try to bribe them. They'll take your gold and your liver. Volo's field notes. Wait, is Volo missing a liver? Volo got carjacked by this frock. Um, five mana for a 3-3 three, three that flies below par. A 3-3 three, three flyer that cares about stuff leaving your graveyard or leaving your battlefield that brings it up to about par i'm not excited about it i think if you're if you play a lot of sack decks you play a lot of um blink stuff i think this could be fun uh next up we have zenterum bandit for one in a black two one halfling rogue hell yeah more rogues whenever zenterum bandit attacks you may pay one life if you do create a treasure token I mean, love it. Love it. It's probably, probably, probably par. Maybe a little below par. You don't always want to attack with a 2 1. The life thing I can get behind because there's lots of fun things you can do with that, especially if you have that uh, packed weapon that doesn't care that your life total hits zero. Um. Yeah, I think this would just be interesting if it was like whenever Bandit or another creature you control attacks or whenever you, the Bandit attacks, you may pay X life and create X treasure tokens, but it's it's standard. It's not super exciting, but it's not terrible either. And that's it for the mono black card. That was pretty exciting. Um, I think I'm going to want to run through red real quick here, but I do um, need to get more tea. So as these set colors start to 
pass by us. I'm having a lot of fun. These cards are really exciting. Um, but they are taking a little bit of time. I always forget how long these set previews take for full set lists. So uh, we will be right back. 